And for my family, gotta build a legacy. I'ma be the man when I'm dead. Work too hard, I can't slip up, so I'm clutching tight on this leg. All right, what's happening, everybody? We are back here on MLB The Show 23, Los Angeles Angels franchise. And today, we are doing a little things different. Um, I did make a community post and just get some of you guys' feedback on if you guys wanted to do a, you know, kind of like a midweek update. So, no gameplay in this. It'll just be us going over, like, you know, let's look at our uh, prospects that we have in the minor leagues. Let's look at, you know, some trade options potentially. And, you know, let's look at what's going around the league. Look at the standings. Look at stats. Look where we're kind of ranking everywhere. So, it's pretty much how I want to make this video. So, if you guys do want to see this, hey, we'll keep posting it. If not, you know, just let me know. Comment section down below. But, yeah, definitely would like to do this some you know, at least once a week, you know, looking at doing this on Wednesdays too. So, you know, just kind of that little midweek update and just kind of seeing how everything is going around us and like, you know, how our rivals are faring. I mean, for the most part, we know how our rivals are faring because <laughs> if we're not playing them, we, I tend to try and show the standards after each game. So, but I want to say thank you all for the support you guys have been showing on this series so far. And I appreciate the future support you guys will show. So without further ado, let's hop into this and how about we go ahead and start with our side of things and let's look into our minor league prospect all right and then like i said at the very beginning of this series there's not a lot going on here with this team like in the mind their farm system is pretty weak i mean there are a team that can pretty much kind of buy their way around now whether they do it successfully or not that's a different story right now for the angels so um one, there's a few guys we have had an eye on and one of them is starting pitcher kai bush so right now he is in the minors uh well not the minors. he is in double a he's with our affiliate the trash pandas and right now he's got an era of a 3.32 44 strikeouts to 19 walks so it's better than two to one whip is a 1.62 that's a little bit higher than what we would like um let's see if we can see any other stats that he's got going on so three and three on the year oh that may be his fault might not be Giving up 51 hits in 43 innings of work, 24 runs, only 16 are earned though. It has given up three home runs, so it's got a complete game. It has three, only three quality starts, so looks like the times he's gotten a quality start, they've gotten the job done. Potentially, we don't know if that's true or not, but it could be the case. But yeah, he is a left-handed pitcher. His overall is going up, so that is one thing we like to see. He's 23 years old, 6'6", 240 pounds. This dude is a big guy. Holy crap. A big left thing up. What was that? Okay. So four seam gets up to about a 94. He's got a he's got a pretty basic setup right here. Four seam slider change up in a curveball. So not bad. Um stamina's going down. That's not one thing we'd like to see. I don't know if we can, you know, I have to look to see if we can uh, do training on the minor league guys. We probably can, I'd imagine so. So definitely need to get that looked into. But I'm thinking about calling him up to triple A. Actually, I think no, no, I'm thinking somebody else. But yeah, I'm thinking about calling him up to AAA because there's a guy here at the bottom that should not be in AAA. I don't even know how you pronounce his last name. Maybe it's Cam Vo. But 6.48 ERA, 23 strikeouts to 23 walks and 41 innings, 2 and 5. Whip is almost at a 2. I mean, yeah, so I think we're going to make that change. We're going to see how Kai Bush does in AAA. And if it's a little bit too much for him, we'll go ahead and call him back down. You know, maybe after a month or two, we'll see how it goes. But we're going to go ahead and let him get his promotion to AAA and then we'll make the move and send Cam down because he doesn't even, how does it look like he might even need to be in Class A at this point. But yeah, so that's one move we're going to go ahead and make. The other guy, I believe Kai Bush was, he was either fourth or fifth. I believe he was five. He was the fifth ranked prospect in our farm system. And Chase Silseth, is ranked number four. Now, Silseth is having a very strong season despite his win-loss record. He's got an ERA of a 2.24. Strikeouts to walks could be better. It's not not really that close to two to one. He would have to really crank them strikeouts up if he wanted to get there. But he's got 48 strikeouts, 30 walks on the season, and he's pitching pretty well. And we're not going to call him up just yet, but we are going to be, you know, looking at him potentially. Maybe later on in the season, you know, we're going to let, hopefully, you know, he keeps his good groove going. Maybe in a couple months we decide, okay, he's still looking very solid because there's some guys we have in, in that bullpen that probably could go. But look, take a look at his pitch repertoire. Four-seamer, splitter, slider, sinker, 12-6 curve. I mean, he's got he's got some good pitches there that, you know, if he develops properly, man, he might be a real, real nice addition to our rotation. But it looks like, and he even spent a little bit of time in the majors last year. So, had seven... Started seven games, went one and three, so 
they definitely have seen him a little bit. Did get up seven home runs, but he already, yeah. He looked he clearly wasn't ready last time he came up, probably as a 21 year old, but he's 22. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna give him some time. We're not, we don't want to rush him up too quickly. Like his potential isn't the highest. It's only a C, but maybe, just maybe, because we got some young guys on. But maybe, you know, we got some young guys in our rotation, like Reed Detmer. So I don't know. Maybe he's, I mean, we also kind of need another right-handed pitcher because we got four lefties that we're throwing out there, and then Shohei's our only righty. And right now, Shohei is up for free agency. So we gotta try and make some things work here because if we can't re-sign Shohei, we are going to be in a really bad spot pitching wise so this is one of the things why we got to kind of get it you know under control and situated properly outside that there are not really too many other guys that we're looking at you know potentially you know in the pitching staff to call up um, we got some guys that might need to be dropped down like Cesar Valdez I mean good grief you got an ERA of a 10.10.13 I mean Jacob well you know yeah we're gonna go ahead and do that now you're 38 years old anyway send him down to double A and Jacob Webb, congratulations, you're getting called up to triple it. Even though you're only 20, you're 29 years old, but hey, you know. Fortunately, it's not a young guy we're going to be giving that call, but oh, okay, look at this. Davis Daniel. Fortunately, he's a 58 overall. 25 years old, 1.66 ERA, doing very, very well out of the pen. Looks like he's more trying to become a starter, but could be likely more of a long relief pitcher type of role. So, we got some guys down here that are, you know, doing their thing a little bit in our minor system in the relief pitcher, so not bad. See a couple of double-A guys that don't have the best stuff. But Nash Walters, another guy. Deep potential, 52 overall. Hmm. He might be able to get moved to triple-A. There's not too many guys there, though. Closing pitching-wise, we just, we don't really have anything good here. <laughs> like, we don't. He's not even, Carlos Estevez isn't, isn't even our, our closer. We use Jimmy Herget. So, yeah. <laughs> that should tell you what we have in our relief pitching. Like, it's just not a lot going on. Um... Then we have Logan O'Hoppy. We already know. And then we brought up Anthony Morin. Now, he's doing okay. He's only had 14 plate appearances. So I'm guessing he's only been in maybe like three games so far this year. Four at the most, if that. And batting 286, not too bad. We'll have to see what happens with Max Stassi. Um, he'll probably be probably a good chance that Stassi might even be a trade candidate for us. So, don't see him coming back to the starting lineup and overtaking O'Hoppy. O'Hoppy's having a... Decent little year, batting almost 260, three home runs, 15 RBIs, so not too bad. And Moron, hey, I mean, he's the opportunity he's been given, he's doing okay, so not too bad. Actually, one of the guys we were considering bringing over was Chad Wallach, and he's actually looks like he's on a little heater, so but I think we'll keep sticking with Moron until Stassi comes back, and then we'll decide to make our decision. Then here's an interesting spot. Luis Rengifo is struggling quite handily. Now, one thing we have been getting with Rengifo is a lot of walks. We have 13 walks right now, and last year he had a total of 17. Looks like the most he had in the season was 40, which I feel like that's quite a bit, if I'm not wrong. But, yeah, 13 walks on the year. We've actually drawn quite a bit of them ourselves. But, man, he just can't get that average up. And even then, he's not really hitting for a lot of power. He only has three home runs and 10 RBIs, so... Does have five doubles, which you know, I believe our leader is like Shohei. He's almost at like 20. Now, I'm not comparing, trying to compare him to Shohei, but would like for Ringifo to give us a little bit more. Now, one nice thing is maybe you know, he can play a little bit other positions. So, if in case you know, maybe we drop an injury, you know, anything, but we're kind of, I don't know, Ringifo kind of gives us not much of a a threat that we were hoping for. I mean, look at his batting stats right there. He's got 80 vision, 83 power versus lefties. Now, that's the problem right there. He doesn't bat righty. I mean, he's a switch hitter. So, he doesn't bat right-handed a lot. So, it's kind of like where the issue is. But, we're going to take a look here at Adrian Palsencia. And I believe, you know, we're going to go ahead and call him up to uh, AAA. He's a 19-year-old, 62 overall, C prospect, or C potential. So, could be a guy, you know, that might be able to make some hay. You know, he's doing well. He's got six home runs, 22 RBIs. So, yeah, he's definitely looking very solid. So, we're going to move him up to AAA. And I'm not exactly sure who we're going to send down. I don't think I want to send the second baseman that's already up there down. We might send maybe one of these guys that are on a cold spell. And, yeah, we'll send Kevin Paul though down, or Pat Lowe down. But yeah, so we'll keep an eye on these guys. Yeah, so there's a few guys, you know, we want to look at here and... Maybe one of these guys ends up making the show one day. It probably won't be this year. At least not these infielders. Because right now we're a little bit stacked. I'm hoping Rengifo just turns it around though, man. He's, he's got a lot of potential there. Just need him to turn it around. 
Zach Nato is another guy. I believe he's another top prospect. I believe he actually got caught up in real life. And he was actually a guy that ended up getting hurt early in the season in April. So we actually kind of like glanced over it. But yeah, Nito will we'll leave him down in double A for now. He's kind of doing, he's just doing okay. Batting only 227, one home run and 12 RBIs. I mean, he's not a power hitter, so I don't expect him to have a bunch of home runs. And But if, you know, if he does get caught up, you know, we'll have to see. You know, right now, we got Velasquez up here in the majors, and yeah, we can probably do a little bit better than that. And that's where we come in to LeVon Soto. Soto is batting 285, three home runs, and 20 RBIs. He's 22. He's only a 64 overall, but six years younger and only three three back. I mean, he might be a better replacement than Velasquez. So this is a guy we're going we're gonna to keep an eye on, LeVon. Hopefully, you know, maybe he gives us something. He's a good fielder as well. Um, so I mean, it looks like he's going up and his power ratings are going up a little bit too. So let us see it. Um, actually, he had, him, he had some service time last year um, with the Angels. Ended up with 18 games. He hit his first career home run at that. Nine RBIs, a couple walks. Struck out 13 times. Not good, but hey, he batted 400. So he clearly was doing something right. On base percentage of 414, which I mean, most of that was due to his batting average, but. You know, OPS was a point nine nine six, so he's definitely a guy we're probably gonna be thinking about calling up. And it's a left-handed batter, so that's another. And honestly, you know, let, let's go ahead and do it now. We're gonna go ahead. Well, no, 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 no. It's not gonna. We're gonna let him keep. We're gonna let him keep going. But because right now we haven't. I don't even think I've put in Velasquez like on my own. I don't think I've played with him at all. And no, no, scratch it. No, we're gonna we're gonna call up Soto. We're calling him up. Get up here. Velasquez, we're going to send you down to AAA. And that's how we're going to let that work. LeVon, welcome to the show again, man. Hopefully, I'm guessing he came in probably at the end of the year, like when they start bringing in guys, you know, end of the season. But what is it, September they start doing that? And they start bringing these players in? But as prospects go, I believe that's really all we have to look at here. We do got a couple outfielders, but right now, man, outfield, we're kind of... <laughs> We're trapped. Like, we got guys that are up here, and they're not leaving really anytime soon. Unless we trade maybe, like, a Hunter Renfro for something else. But even then, they're kind of blocked. So, maybe these guys kind of become more trade pieces. But one interesting note here. Brett Phillips. Look at this, you guys. He only has 65 at-bats. I haven't put him in because I'm always playing with Trout. He's got five home runs and 16 RBIs. Batting 262, he's batting extremely well. I mean, just look at his fielding. He's a, clearly a field demon. Like, 69 overall. C potential. I mean, 28. So, he's been in the league for a few years already. But, I mean, man, just look at the... <laughs> look at the fielding numbers this guy's got. But, I'm surprised. Those stats are pretty dang good. Like, and he's had limited time. And he's already got five home runs. So, clearly, when he gets this opportunity, he makes it known that, hey, I can be somewhat serviceable as a backup. So... They said we kind of got a log jam here in the outfit. There's not really many guys that can really kind of play out there at the moment. All right, that's really all we have to do for the prospect situation. Those are the guys we kind of wanted to. I wasn't, I was, I didn't plan to call up Soto, so, but I kind of talked about, you know, some of the guys who might be interested in trading. Um, Max Stassi could be one of those guys that are on the book. And actually, there's one guy we didn't go through and talk about. Actually, skip right over it. Gio Urshila, or Urshila, however you pronounce his name. Don't know how long he will be here. He's probably a guy we are going to look to deal here at some point. Only batting 224, home run, one home run, 12 RBIs, so it's just not much going on. But I know they just traded for him in real life, like in the offseason, so. I don't know, I feel like we might be able to get something for him. I mean, he's an older guy, too, so. Trying to, trying to kind of get some, might be getting rid of some of the older guys. This, this team is a little... A little bit mixed. They're probably more older than it is younger. Yeah, they got a lot of guys that are, you know, if they're not 30, they're going to be they're closing in on 30. I believe when yeah, Gifo is like the youngest, like, batter. Well, I guess technically Logan O'Hoppy is, but, you know, like, when Gifo is like one of the younger batters here, too. So, but Urshila, yeah, I don't know. Right now, I'm not really playing him because, honestly, David Fletcher is doing a better job than he is. I mean, batting 302. Doesn't have as many RBIs, but he hasn't had as many plate appearances as Urshila has either. So, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, Sheila's probably the odd man out of the guys in the rotation on the infield. And then, of course, Max Stassi. I mean, for him, he's injured. And even when he did play, he wasn't like doing well at the time anyway. Ohapi was always going to have the starting job. Maybe because he's younger and we want to see him develop. And he's only 23 years old. So, six, 67 overall. I mean, he's not much 
less than Stassi is, and he's got B potential. So we want to see him continue to develop and grow. Well, um, quick thing, let's go ahead and take a look at the standings here. We are a game back behind the Rangers now. We kind of go over our division quite a bit, so I'm not going to spend much time on it. But the Rangers are on a five-game winning streak. I mean, good grief, they are. They're doing extremely well. And they're doing a lot of their damage on the road. They are 17 and seven right now. Looks like night games are 16 and three. So, or not 16, they're 16 and 13. That might be the best time to actually get them boys. And in division, they're 10 and six. And my goodness, that looks at seven and 15 in the division. Sheesh. But we can see why the Mariners are falling back under 500. They're two and eight in their last ten, so they are struggling. But top three teams here in the division, five and five in the last ten, so all kind of sitting around the 500 mark. Then we go over to the American League Central. The Cleveland Guardians are leading the way, four and a half game lead. How the Detroit Tigers are up in second place, I'm not too sure, because I'm pretty sure in the real life they are pretty much one of the worst. I mean, look, you can see the team rankings up in the top right, ranked 28th. 29th contact, 28th power, 25th pitch, and 28th defense. The only thing they got going for them is speed. And their run differential is negative. So how they are up here in second place, I mean, I, I'm not too positive. I mean, they're barely over 500, so it's just a game. But right now it looks like it's the Guardians division, and I think they're going to run away with this one. Then we got the Yankees leading out in the American League East. I believe the Rays are leading actually in real life, but they're only two games back out there, so... Not too bad. Rays on a four-game win streak. Yankees on a two-game win streak. The Blue Jays, Red Sox, and Orioles. Where's who? Team that looked like they were going to have some promise coming into this year. Not doing too well. Ten games below 500. A couple games back behind the Red Sox. So, we'll see if they turn that season around, though. Hopping over to the National League East. We have the New York Mets. 34-16 and 16 on the season. They are looking hot. But the Braves are right on their tail. 32-17. and 17, Only a game and a half back. The NL pennant winner is the Phillies. They are seven games back, four games above 500. Not doing too bad, but you know, they would definitely love to be doing a little bit better. Got the Nationals and Marlins both below 500. So I believe that National League is going to be, it's probably going to come a little bit closer. I imagine Phillies probably catch back up. If not, Mets and Braves are in for, for what looks like to be a good one, but the, the Mets are on a four game losing streak at that. So. Yeah, I'm curious if they're home because away they are doing extremely well at 21 and 7. National League Central time, we had the Cardinals leading the way, and this one looks to be the dumps of fire division. And it's not surprising; I mean, it's probably going to be somewhat similar. To that. I mean, I believe both Central leagues are kind of, for the most part, pretty weak. Cardinals are leading in here. I'm not sure who's leading this division in real life, to be honest. But I mean, they're all within single digits, so nobody's like you know going to probably take off with this. The Cardinals probably had the best shot at doing it, but. Brewers and Cubs, I mean, they're not far back. They're both only, man, even the Reds, only five and a half. So, Brewers sitting at 500. Cubs just a couple games. Well, they're four games back, but also four games below 500. And the Reds, I'd be shocked if they do find a way. But right now, I mean, Cardinals, most of that is because they're on a five-game win streak. They were below 500 as well. So, at some point, all, every team in this division was below 500. Yeah, that, the winner of this division might not even be a 91 team. Like, that's what it's looking like. But they won eight of their last two as well. So, Cardinals, maybe they're finding their stride now. And now in the National League West, we have the Dodgers and Padres tied for first. Diamondbacks sitting in third place. Rockies dead last. Giants sitting in fourth. And, yeah, yeah this is going to be another one that's probably going to be very, very close. But look at how many runs the Padres have already scored. 241. And the Dodgers have only scored 219. Dodgers have haven't given up many runs though, and Dodgers are struggling a little bit. They, they three of the last seven. Padres also kind of struggling a little bit as well for the last six, where the Diamondbacks actually right now probably the hottest team in the division at seven and three. So interesting here. So this is going to be a another one to be a nice little race to keep an eye on. We're definitely excited to see how that one goes. All right, we'll go ahead and look at some of the rankings here. At batting average, well, we're not going to – we'll look for us and see where we're at, but I'm not going to go through, like, the top 30 below. We'll show off these top fives here. So, Mets leading the way. No shocker. Uh, maybe not no shocker, but, like, their, their record is extremely well. Unfortunately, our division is not us leading the way in average. It is the Houston Astros. And honestly, I'm not too surprised we're not too high up here. All right, let's see where we are at. Sitting at 15th, middle of the pack, and it's mainly because I don't know why Trout is batting so low. I mean, we got a lot of guys that are batting pretty low, but Trout batting 226 is extremely surprising. And I guess we'll, you know, take a look, see at the bottom and the Royals. Doormat tied with the Marlins, both batting 230 on the year. Yikes. 
The Mets are first in runs at 256. They are doing their thing. Astros 246. I mean, good grief. We are tied for seventh, though. We are 219 tied with the Braves and the Dodgers. So a three-way tie right there. Not bad. Five behind the Guardians to tie up for the next spot. But, okay. Not, not too shabby. Hits. Mets have 500 hits already. Oh, my goodness. And we are 15th. So we're really sitting middle of the pack in a lot of these outside of doubles. We are leading the league in doubles. I thought we had... I'm told we had quite a bit of doubles, man. Because I was seeing some guys that were up there. And it popped up. It was like... You got 18, and yeah, I, was, I saw Ward, you know, his went up. I was like, okay, we got some guys. Trout's, Trout doesn't have too many on the season from what I've seen so far. Triples, I won't be surprised if we're kind of near the back end of the triple list. And yeah, we got eight. And I don't think I've had any of them, like, personally playing. So this is all based off Sims. So tied for 22nd. Rays, number one in the league with 15 triples. Interesting, because that ballpark they, they play in is not really, not really one you would get a lot. So I'm curious if they get most of those on the road or not. Leading the league in home run are the Braves with 76. Honestly, kind of surprised we aren't pretty high on this. Well, we might be high, but we're not in the top five. Fortunately here, the freaking Houston Astros are sitting in third. I'm seeing the Astros all over the dang place. But let's see where we are. Okay, we're in the top 10 with 59. Not too bad. Okay, well, maybe that's why. I think we just got a lot of guys that have home runs, but we don't have many with double digits. So right now, it's just Shohei and Trout with 11 apiece. And the league leader... Let's be Kyle Tucker, regardless of league, with 15 already on the year. RBIs goes to the Mets. Freaking Astros are sitting right there again. So right now the Astros are beating us out literally like in every single category right now but doubles. And even then, I, where, where were they at in doubles? Were they right behind us? Uh, eh, they're in six, so 13 back. But yeah, RBIs goes to the Mets. We took, yeah, we took a look. Yeah, we're tired for seven. It's all in bases. I don't really steal bases, so... Yeah, we're tied for 20. So all that's been done by the computer. Most walks in the league belong to the Mets, but we are sitting second, 186. Trout has 29. Oh, excuse me. Rendon has 29. Trout, 26. 24 for Shohei. Okay, it's not too bad, boys. Okay, well, hey, we're getting people on base. That's, I mean, that's how we're going to keep winning games. Strikeouts, leading the league. Well, the least amount of strikeouts. We are tied for second with 287, but the least amount go to the Houston Astros. Once again, beating us out in the category. They're 279. Grounded in double plays. The Seattle Mariners have the least for 20. Curious where to see where we are at on this list. And boy, this is not good. We are still going down. Astros with 32. We had 35. So we're in the bottom portion of the league. We got a lot of double plays out here. That's for sure. Now let's see what happens when it comes to errors. Astros have the least amount with 15. And we are tied for 7 with the Dodgers of so L.A. Over here tying it up with 22. That's definitely most of them. I'm, honestly, is that a lot of errors to have at this point in the season? I feel like it is because 43 errors by the Giants. I mean, we're not even through May. Man, that, that seems like a lot. That seems like that's almost an error a game for the Giants almost. ERA, the Dodgers have the best at 287 here. And we will see where we're at. We are 10th at 348. So we're actually finding better than Astros there, something. Here's where the Astros do land in this one. They had 388, so there's a big little gap right there. Hmm. We are second with, we're tied for second with the Cubs with most shutouts. We have seven. Mets lead the league with eight, so pitching staff getting it done. Cardinals have the most uh, saves on the year with 19. Not exactly sure. I believe we had like a 13th or 14th save of the year just happened, so. Uh. Maybe another picture. Okay, we got 15 on the year. So, ah, Griffin Cannon has got one of them. Okay, I'm about to say, because I saw Herget. I believe it was around like 13, 14 when, it, when the uh, stat came up. Hits allowed. Dodgers are giving up the least with 359. Astros in that top five. And we are 18th. We have given up 436 hits. And not the best, boys. We've got to control them hits. We do get... We do give up quite a bit. Especially like that when we play the Yankees. Like, we kept giving up lead-off hits, like, constantly. Runs allowed. Braves are giving up the least. We'll see where we are at, and we are tied for seven. I mean, hey, a lot of times, well, we just gave up our first, like, runs in the games we played. Like, we hadn't really been giving up anything. But, of course, to the Sim, the Sim, they are giving up runs. So, you know, we can't control that either. Home runs allowed. We are third least. Now, that, I'd like to see that. Only giving up 46. Looks like Detmers is only giving up two. Detmers is pitching well. I'd like to see that, man. Good job. We have a... 
top strikeout leaders here. 415. The Rays lead the league. 69 strikeouts for Shane McClanahan already. Blake Snell has set. Carlos Rodon is 78. And Garrett Cole 74. We are seventh. We have set, Shohei has 76. I mean, my goodness, boy. Dealing. Detmers 56. Well, I told you, I, mean, I like that boy Detmers, man. Detmers. Play on my squad anytime, man. I like it. And that is going to do it here for, you know, league-wide. And we'll take a look at league leaders as well here. Um, we'll probably just flip. We'll probably just stick with the first, you know, little tab here. So, I'm not, not going to go scrolling down. If we pop up in these top eight, we'll pop up here. But, so, I lead the uh, American League is Rafael Devers. Batting 382. Off to a very, very good start on the season. He's batting extremely well. He's got eight home runs, too, and 32 RBIs. National League League leader is Bryce Harper batting 371. So he's also doing an extremely good job. No surprise. 11 home runs, 23 RBIs, off to a great start. His leader in the American League, Shohei, is actually up here. He has 57. He's tied for fifth with Vladimir Guerrero. Devers leads it, though. Matt Carpenter leads it for the National League with 62. Shohei leads the league in doubles with 18. Brandon Drury and Taylor Ward tied for fourth with 13 with a bunch of other guys, too, up here. So we got three guys in the top five. Love to see that. American League, uh, excuse me, National League is led by Brandon Nimmo, who leads the entire league with 19 of them. Louise Robin, my boy, with the White Sox. Five triples already on the year. Shohei has three triples. Okay, Shohei, I see. Tied for the top five. And Jazz Chisholm Jr., cover boy. Five triples on the year as well. Kyle Tucker leads the league, in, well, leads the American League with 15 home runs. I believe he leads the league. Yeah, he leads the entire majors right now with 15. Judge, 14. We don't have anybody here in this top eight range, and well, I guess we're tied for top eight because Shohei and Trout both have 11. Matt Olson leads it for the National League, though, with 14 home runs. Jeff McNeil leads the National League in RBI. Well, he's tied with it, with Matt Carpenter has 36, and Judge 35 for the Yankees. Shohei is tied for fifth with a long list of names as well with 32. Shohei is in second place for the most runs, right behind Jose Ramirez, who has 35. Shohei with 33. We'll take it. Juan Soto leads the entire league with 39 runs coming up. They just, <laughs> that Potter's team, but they got a lot of guys in that lineup, boy. Stolen base leader is Whit Merrifield with 18 on the season. Sterling Marte with 16. I, said, I don't stay a lot of bases, so I know we're not going to be high up on this list. Jose Ramirez has the most walks in the American League. We got two guys up here in the top four Mike Trout and Anthony Rendon. Rendon with 29 and Trout with 26. And Christian Yelich also has 30 walks on the season. So we have a tie for the entire league with 30. Garrett Cole with the most wins so far among starting pitchers with 8. Tyler Anderson has 6. Joe Musgrove in a, in a long tie with a bunch of guys with 6 wins on the on the year. And Alex Lang has the most saves. Tied with Clay Holmes with 15 in the American League. Liam Hendricks, get well soon. Liam, 14 saves in 3rd. Tied with Jimmy Herget, Brock Burke, and Emmanuel Class. And Ryan Helsley, 17 saves, leads the entire majors for the Cardinals. Mm, not bad. ERA leader, oh my goodness, Justin Verlander with a 1.55. Wow, leads the entire league. Tyler Anderson leads it for us. Okay, 172. Look at my boy Reed Detmers, man, with a 2 ERA. I said, man, the, the, the dude is good. I can't wait to pitch with him next in his next outing, man. I can't wait. That dude, that dude's stuff was nasty. Shohei's is kind of ballooned up. We actually will go look. I don't know where he, he, he ended up going to like three something. Yeah, there you go. He's had a rough couple of outings his last go, his last couple. Home runs allowed. Lance McCullers is only giving up one on the year. Reed Detmers is only is giving up two, so he's doing well for us. And it looks like at least a man has been giving up. Is Zach Gallon with only two in the National League? Shout out. We got a couple guys up here with two. We got a, not a couple, but a few guys up here with two. Tyler Anderson is one of them. And three by Max Scherzer. And two by Justin Verlander. Boy, that Mets, boy, they got some good dealing over there. And leading the league in strikeouts is Carlos Rodon. Otani, just a couple behind him, though, with 76. Blake Snell leads it for the Padres with 70. Pitching war, Rodon leads the league, 2.5. Otani is up here with a 2.1, so not bad. And for the National League side, Zach Gallen, 2.3. Batting war, Goldschmidt tied with Dansby Swanson on the Cubs with a 2.5 war. Aaron Judge has a 3. I don't know who our highest guy would be. It might be, it's going to be Shohei with a 1.6. Curious where Trout is with a 1.5. Okay. 
and that's gonna do it for us going around the league here in this one so we did get some things done minor league wise got a good little look and seeing kind of what's going around the league here and just to kind of see what you know our counterparts are doing throughout the year so we're definitely interested in seeing what you know these guys are doing if i did miss anything that you guys want to see just let me know we'll try and make it done for the next video um next time probably might be getting into some trouble well, who knows when we'll get into the trade stuff because that that could happen either during the midweek or that could happen during one of our actual videos if i feel like yeah we got to get a deal done like right now so we'll see how that ends up going for us but yeah that's gonna end up doing it for us here in this one you guys i want to say thank you all once again for watching another video if y'all enjoyed it make sure you guys hit that like button comment down below once again you know if there's anything else you would like to see in these videos hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with this angel series and more that we're gonna be posting here on the channel here in the future i'm out to next time everybody hope you guys stay safe out there oh also if you guys missed any videos playlist link in the description as well but yeah you guys stay safe out there catch you guys in the next one god bless and peace Close it out, future. And it's the love from my fans got me still here.